So this has kind of been home for the last uh, four months. I'm packed, ready to go on my new adventure. Leave tomorrow. Um, there's me with my son Max, and there's Max. Those photos are taken by my uh, younger brother's wife, actually Jenny. Did a very good job. Of those. And then we've got like my shrine corner, if you like. It's from 2011. When I was on the Red Arrows, here I am, a young man. And that's the official photographer there, and then you've got the famous one here. We'll get the glare out of the way. There's me, Oop. from 2012. The flight over Buckingham Palace with the Queen's Diamond Jubilee. Yeah, obviously living with your parents at my age is not ideal, but. I had no choice, I had no option. I wanted to potentially move back into somewhere else when I came back, but with everything happening with COVID, it just wasn't possible. So here is the best place to be. And I thank my parents very much for looking after me for that long and putting up with me. Um, but it has had its perks living around here. And uh, the local area is littered with great walks and things and great opportunities to get some great photographs. And that's kind of what I've been trying to take advantage of, I guess, since I've been here. Weaver's Way and it's a great place to get photographs fantastic place to get some photography I mean you've got the old bridge there with the North Walsham and Dillham Canal running underneath it the only canal recognized canal in Norfolk uh, again steeped in history with some of the things that used to come down there like the Norfolk wherries just back there in the distance we've come under uh, an old railway bridge and uh, I'll take you back onto the path shortly and show you where the railway used to run no longer runs sadly um, but yeah, I mean, this is a fantastic place. I mean, look at that. When my son was here um, a few weeks back, just for a, for a week or so, I took him and my nephew down there for a walk, and it's it's like a different world almost. The canal actually opened in 1826, and as you can see, it ran for around about nine miles, and not only did it bring tourists down, as you can see in the top photo there, and, and in the bottom photo down the bottom here, but also it brought a lot of goods in as well, things like timber, uh, there was a lot of offal and, and things like that that was brought along. And the reason actually it's called Weaver's Way is it's named after the Flemish um, uh, cotton manufacturers and material manufacturers that used to come down here and walk down here and then eventually use the train to trade all the local materials into places like Aylsham, North Walsham and Cromer. Now as I mentioned, this is near my parents' home and when I was a kid living at home, um, obviously before I left home at 21 to join the Air Force, um, all this area around here was all completely overgrown. You couldn't see any of the waterway at all. It was completely covered in trees, uh, the reeds and nettles and everything. You really couldn't see any of this area whatsoever. And it's taken a team of very dedicated volunteers from the North Horsham and Dillham Canal Trust to come through here, cut it all back, cut walkways and pathways through, clear the canal to the extent that it, it can be um, to make this possible. And the, the area the, around here is privately owned by a local farmer, so it's very difficult sometimes to get some of this access. So um, hats off to those guys for doing such great work. This is the old road bridge that ran across the top of a railway which is where this pathway is now. Now this is Weaver's Way, a 61 mile track that runs from Cromer to Great Yarmouth, coast to coast uh, around Norfolk. And as I said, this path here used to be a railway line. You can see across there, there's a gate there and the remnants of a gate buried in amongst all those trees and nettles in there. And that was the, the gate post crossing for people to walk across towards the canal. It was like a pathway or walkway roadway over to the canal there. This was the railway crossing here and this is the road bridge that went across over the top.
So we're now on what's called the canal walk, which is just a small little loop really around uh, the canal area off just off of Weaver's Way. And this was my son's and mine really favourite part of the walk. Um, it's not as I say, it's not really part of Weaver's Way. It's a little bit that they've cut out just to give walkers and people visiting um, a little glimpse of the canal and, and what it was like. One thing I would suggest is if you are going to walk this, um, maybe wear long trousers or something because there are a lot of nettles. They do cut this back periodically to clear it but you know it's summer so things are growing quite rapidly at the moment. Uh, we've just had a, a couple of days of wet weather so things are a little bit more tricky underfoot but yeah you get some pretty good stinging nettle stings but um, yeah my son loved this part. I mean this is again part of the canal here. You can just see through the trees that's where the bridge was from earlier where we were. So we're literally just over the other side of that little break of water and you've got this area down through here which you know it doesn't look like Norfolk you know and as you as you walk through it because it is so quiet yes you can slightly hear the road in the background there but because it is so quiet you get to hear all the wildlife. So I'm kind of in the canal walk now, if you like. I'm just going to stop. We've just literally had a rumble of thunder, which is still petering off in the background, but listen. Nothing. Even in the height of summer, and there is a campsite just down the road, when it is bustling with tourists locally, this always seems to be really, really quiet, and it's great. Now we're coming here to a spot where I took a couple of photographs of my son Max and my nephew Jacob. Um, I got one with my son sat on this very bridge here looking down the canal that way but also got one of them just walking through because as you can see you've got the light that's hitting the bridge here and then some light breaking through this gap in the trees just here and then it goes dark again when you get this p the uh, paddle wood or try and focus on that so you can see the different lighting and the colours as well, the browns, the greens, the earthy colours. Usually on a vlog, I would put music over these sort of cut through scenes where you know you, you can see me walking from place to place or I'm just sort of filling time to to get from A to B. But I'm gonna leave I'm gonna leave it just so you can enjoy the sounds or lack of in this area.
a good job I've brought my umbrella with me because I have a feeling I might need it shortly. I'm wearing a jacket though, so it could get wet. We shall see. So we're now coming to the end of this small little um, off walk, offshoot of a walk, which is the Dunham Canal Walk. Um, literally the end of it is just up here. And then we're going to walk down, I'm going to take you down to what was Honing Station. So here we are, excuse my shoes, back on Weaver's Way. That's where we've come from. And um, we've just, well, this is technically where we've come from the canal walk, but that's where we started the canal walk down there. And that's where the railway bridge is. And now Honing Station is this way. So we'll take a walk down this way. Now this field on the left of me here, on one day I was walking through, uh, there just happened to be a farmer combining the field and I've always really wanted to get a decent shot of that having grown up around that kind of thing as a kid uh, my step-grandfather, his brother was a farmer and he was always combining this field whenever we seemed to be coming up and we'd have a go on it as kids and it was great fun and I always wanted to get a decent photo of one so I managed to stop and uh, just sort of watched him come through the field through this way um, you've got the interesting barns in the background there, obviously the field was full of corn, uh, corn or uh, wheat or whatever it is, I'm not an expert farmer, whatever it was at the time. And he was down the far corner and I found that he uh, was a good shot but it's, it wasn't what I wanted. So I took a little walk a little bit further along and there's another gap, another opening in the hedgerow. So yeah, this is the spot I picked. Uh, so I wanted to use these trees and branches as kind of a framing. Was it the next one down? I think it was this one down actually. This one here. Yeah. Yeah, so I wanted to use all this as framing, really, as the as the combine was coming straight from that barn straight towards me. By the way, I think that's the culprit for the thunderstorm up there. Um but yeah as it came straight towards me I really wanted to sort of use all this stuff around here as like a frame. And it luckily it turned just in between all this stuff here. And then it came straight towards me again and and then and then went off. Here we are. This here is Honing Station, or what's left of Honing Station. And of course, I'm still stood on the old railway line, which is Weaver's Way walkway. And behind me is the remnants of what was the local train station. That is the station master's house, I suppose. I used to live there, so it's just a normal house now. But let's go and take a look at what's left of, of Honing Station. You can see most of it's gone. Uh, you've got the old waiting room over the other side, uh, the waiting room and the ticket office and where the lavatories were and things on this side. Uh, the track's obviously gone, there's just one small section of track where the loading dock area was and they're currently refurbishing out the back the bays where they would have loaded all the livestock and other farming goods to take further into 
the UK or out to uh, Great Yarmouth where the uh, train train stopped. But um, I'm not a massive uh, train junkie, <laughs> or I'm not, you know, I'm not a train spotter. I don't follow trains, or I'm, I've got no real massive interest in trains. But it's a shame that things like this. I like this now that they've just been left to ruin, and that we don't have railways everywhere across the country in an age especially now where we're looking for more environmentally friendly forms of transport and roads are poorly maintained uh, we have so many accidents on the road we're trying to get less cars in, in the world we're trying to have less lorries and industrial transport um, you think railways would be the answer really very easy to do economically yes they're expensive and it'd be astronomically expensive to put them all back in now but could you imagine this railway station in its prime, it was open 1882 to 1959. In its prime, it would have up to 80 trains a day. Um, and they could be filled with anything from tourists to people who are going to work to freight. You know, farmers here could deliver their goods back into mainland UK, and especially in a time where, you know, we've just had Brexit for crying out loud. Um, and we're going to be relying on our own manufacturing again and our own farming. So, railways would have played a huge part in that. And it's just a shame, really, to see it, see it like this, and to not have something like this still in use. So, handily here at what remains of Honing Station, there's also a map of Weaver's Way. So, as you can see, it starts up here in North Norfolk, in Cromer, and runs the 60 miles all the way down, past further south than this, all the way down into Great Yarmouth, which, as you can see, is a little bit further along the way down there. Now we're currently here, and that's the Honing Railway Bridge, which is the one we saw a little bit earlier. And as you can see, the River Ant runs through here. Now Dillon and North Walsham Canal actually comes off of the River Ant. It's just the remnants of the River Ant. So uh, that's where the canal comes from. And as you can see, it's not all railway line. So these parts along here, this is all just walkway. And it's just the sections really, there's a small section here a section that runs through farming up to North Walsham and then the bit that we're on now which comes from just the other side of North Walsham down into Stalham which is uh, disused railway the rest of it is just walkway um, but yeah that's that's a section the majority section of Weaver's Way so yeah that is Honing Railway Station okay so I'm gonna head away from Honing Station now and uh, I'll probably not make it to Ebridge Mill as it's just started raining and I don't know whether you can see this but it is getting extremely dark overhead, the thunder started to rumble again so I'll just make my way back now. Uh, it's about a mile home so hopefully I get there before it rains too heavily. But just around the corner there down the road, interesting little note, there's another mill called Brigitte Mill. It's not there anymore, it's been destroyed and there was a fire back early in the 1900s um, and the fire actually is the interesting part of it. Um, I think it's a guy called Jeffrey Allen, I'll have to look it up, but I think it's a guy called Jeffrey Allen um, was imprisoned after it burnt down, something to do they reckon with insurance and he was actually an associate of the Cray Twins, the notorious London gangsters, if I don't know if you've seen the, the movie that stars Tom Hardy, that's both twins, but yeah he, it was something to do with them, but that's unfortunately no longer there. I did get a nice photograph of the lot that runs beside Ebr what was Ebridge Mill, so I'll put that up and you can see that. But uh, yeah, it's time to head back. It's glorious sunshine, but raining. Uh, the clouds are getting darker, thunder is getting closer, um, and I'll do my bit about Ebridge Mill from home, and I'll show you the great photos I got from there as well. Have to go up. It is really coming down now. Really coming down, but the sunshine is still going, so you know, it's making for some interesting lighting. Well, I've got nothing else to do, so I might as well tell you a little bit about Ebridge Mill as I'm walking home, rather than do it in the dull indoors. A little bit of cover from the trees now. But Ebridge is a great place. It's now um, I believe some apartments and some are holiday lets as the thunder goes off again behind me. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's the canal, the Dillon, North Washington Dillon Canal, 
runs literally outside it and there's the lock that runs parallel to it and there's that sort of open area of water that a lot of people come down and use as like a swimming hole a lot of people do their um sort of uh see it called um not bodyboarding and the one where you've got the paddle paddle boarding that's it but paddle boarding on there as well and people fish down there and all sorts so it's a it's a really nice sort of uh, evenings, especially on a summer evening, it's very, very nice, and the water gets very, very still, and it becomes almost like glass, like a mirror. So it's perfect for getting those glassy reflections, and that's what I kind of wanted to do when I went down there. I'd, I'd driven past earlier in the in my stay here with my brother, and my younger brother brought me back from his house, back to my parents, and I'd driven past it, and I'd seen that reflection, and with the pink summer evening sky, I just thought, wow, I've got to, I've got to go back in, I've got to photograph that, and the weather for the whole, on the whole really has been really, really good. I mean, this is the first rain we've had in weeks. So um, it's, there's been plenty of opportunities to get down there and get those shots. You just had to wait for the wind to subside so that the water stayed perfectly, perfectly still so I could get those glassy reflections. Um, the mill itself, as I say, is now apartments. It was owned by Cubit and Walker, I believe, uh, until 1996, and it was a flour mill. And it was owned by a company called Duffields, uh, and then it was sold off. And it's, it stood derelict for, for many, many, many years. Uh, throughout my childhood, it was derelict, it was empty. And uh, my friend's dad actually looked at purchasing it at one point and turning it into apartments, but he had a look at it and it was filled with asbestos. So he, he just decided it wasn't worth the financial risk because obviously everything with asbestos has to be ripped out. So he didn't bother in the end, but someone else obviously has taken it on now and they've turned it into what looked like really quite nice apartments and it's a lovely location yes you've got a road that runs right outside your front door but you know for the summer evenings i'll take that easily take that just to live somewhere like that and you know the photographs i got i was so happy with the way they came out i didn't really know what to expect you don't really know what to expect until you go there with your camera you know what you see through the human eye and what you see with the camera are two completely different things, especially when you're limited like I am. I only use my phone at the moment, so you never know what you're gonna get. And uh, yeah, I was so happy. So, so happy with the way they came out. Couldn't have been more pleased. Now, if you like any of the photographs that you have seen in today's vlog, or on my Instagram page, you can head to www danielherrickphoto.com that's danielherrickphoto h-e-r-r-i-c-k photo.com and there's a shop there and you can purchase imagery that you see from the shop and you can get prints of varying different sizes anything starting from a 6x4 which is about 50 pence and then you can also get keepsakes like key rings and things like that as well this is this rain coming down now um, yeah so head to the website head to the shop and you can purchase those images there and if you are interested in some of the editing techniques that I use and the presets that I've used on some of these images, please, by all means, comment on this video um, or send me a message on Instagram or Twitter or anywhere else that you follow me. and I'll happily talk about um, my editing techniques. I'm also looking at putting together preset packages in the future as well. Uh, and if you'd be interested in those, again, please just let me know and I'll look at doing that for you as well. Now before we came down this path here, the canal walk, and we didn't see this. Now I don't know whether this has just happened because when I looked down the path before, this wasn't here. So this is either really, really recent, as in it's happened while we've been walking, or I just didn't see it before, but this is a problem. I made it over the other side. Oh, that was a tough one. That could have been, could have been stuck there forever. Thank 
entrance to Weaver's Way, there's the railway bridge behind. And yeah, like I say, if you ever get a chance on a nice sunny day, rather than on a day like this, um, and you are in Norfolk, uh, definitely give Weaver's Way a look. Um, it's a lovely walk. So my five-year-old loved it. He really enjoyed it. Down the other way, um, I'll put some photos up of this as well. Down the other way, um, there's a lock and uh, there's a little bridge that goes over the lock and my nephew and my son were having a whale of a time just racing sticks down over the waterfall that's there um, and yeah it's it's a great little walk and it, it goes like I say for 61 miles so you, you don't have to do the whole thing from start to finish but you can just stop off I've got this river running through here now maybe this is dry as a bone before um, you can just stop off and uh, and yeah just do sections of it and it's great it really, really is. I'd highly recommend it.